Hello. Today we're going to take a look at the activity for module D um, that we were discussing in a previous class that wasn't working quite well. I figured out the solution to it so we can now move forward with the activity. Again, this is in module D in the um, adding people to our box store database. And we have an updated version of this now that we can reference and use. So the first thing is, is we're going to extract 10,000 records from this randomlists.com. Now when you click on it, it doesn't really work, but that's fine. You can open that in a new window and it will load fine. And what you want to do is you want to change this from the 12 that gets generated to 10,000. So just type that name in and then rerun the script and you will get a large collection. Now it's a little dicey to try and gather all these together, but it can be done. You highlight, you scroll down to the very bottom, and you hold your shift key down on your keyboard, and you will end up highlighting all 10,000 records. Just like that, which is fine. Right click and copy, and then you can open up your text editor. And you can paste the results there. All right. Now for me, I always like to do a little bit of cleaning before I do any data import. And when you take a look at these results, you get four spaces, all right? One, two, three, four spaces. And they seem to be in front of each and every record, which is fine. So I'm going to do um, search and replace or I could do a control R and yours is going to be different. But what I want to do is I want to replace four spaces, one, two, three, four, and I want to replace it with absolutely nothing and replace all. It tells me that it replaces 10,000 items. I can close that and my display looks a lot better. I am one of those old school database users who thinks you should always go through and clean up your data before you import it. I suggest you do the same. Now that I have my data imported, I need to save it somewhere in my file system. I can go File, Save As, and I advise that you put it in the same location that um, your database files are, that we looked at in one of the earlier classes together. We haven't changed the location of our data files. It is in our program files. In Mariah Database 11, there's a folder called data. This is where all of our records ended up. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to store this in this folder here. You can even put it in your SJ box store. You're probably better to put it in that same folder that is the database folder for your database. And as you can see, I've got a couple of pre-tests here. I can actually get rid of both of those. I can delete, because I don't really need them anymore, so I can delete them pretty comfortably. Okay, and then I can call my file whatever I want. I'm just gonna call it 10,000names.txt. You can call it whatever you wish and save it in that. Okay, so I saved it locally, that's perfect. The next thing I need to do is to start working on importing this. Now I'm not gonna import it into the final table, I'll let you figure that out, so I'm just gonna import it into a temporary table and get that working. So the first thing I'm going to do is launch PowerShell. Just click on the Start menu and type in PowerShell, and that opens up the PowerShell. As always, I'll try and zoom in so you can better see what it is that I'm doing, make it a little bit bigger and easier for you to follow along in the video. As always, you launch the MySQL-U root and then prompt for the password, just like that. Before I can start, I have to choose a database. I can't just import it willy-nilly. I have to import it into a database. So of course, I'm going to use 
typos will get you every time. I need to say which database I wish to use, and it is the SJ box store. So I can say use SJ underscore box store, just like that. And now I'm in the correct database. And the one thing that was missing before is we have to set a variable. We want to set a global variable that allows us to import using the load in file command, which is referenced in this link here. And we were talking about when we take a look at this example here, actually, we can open that up in a new page. Open link in new tab, much better. And they talk about using the load in file. For this to work, at least for me, I needed to set a global variable to allow the in file to load. So that's going to be the first thing that I do. And I do that by saying set the global variable local in file to one, which is to true to allow it to work. It doesn't change anything in the database or any of my tables, but it changes a configuration. Okay. The next thing I need to do is to have a table set. When I take a look at my tables, I have a temporary table created just for this activity. And when I say describe my, my people import table, it just has one column. All right. I make sure that it is actually empty and it's not. So I'm going to delete from people import where one is equal to one because again we want you to consider where clauses when you're doing update or delete statements. We don't want you to get into the habit of just saying delete from some table because invariably that deletes everything. Now we want to delete everything. So I say where one is equal to one which is a test that always tests true. So for each row, it's going to say, well, I must delete this one. Okay. And it empties out my table. Perfect. I have an empty table now. Now I can take a look at loading the data. Again, we have a very clear set of instructions here. We just need to figure out which apply. There's a couple of things I want to draw your attention to. Um, you need a, a carriage return and a new line. This is something that is needed in our import. Because we're doing it to a text file, we need to say the lines end with a da backslash R and a black backslash N. At least that's what worked for me. But again, try and figure out what might apply to you in this. For me, I just did the following. Okay. And when I do this command, it tells me that it imported 10,000 rows. So I can do my select statement up here again, where I just pull the first 20 and see what they look like. And they look very good. So that's all I really want to give you today to help you work on this because the next thing you need to do is to either import this directly into your people table or copy from the people import table into your people table and while doing so separating the first and the last name because as we've seen As we've seen, we have the four columns of data, the full name, the first name, and the last name. When you bring them over, they're going to be null, and you're going to need to go through and, as we discussed in our last class together, separate the first name and the last name. That's it. If you have any problems, let me know, but that's what I want you to work on in our remote class in today. Good luck, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.